Hello guys, so I thought we'd uh, discuss in, in this video um, the biological molecules. We'll talk about water to start with and in order to understand how water is useful um, for living organisms you need to bring everything about it back to its structure. So who better to talk about the structure of water than a very special guest? Thank you, Dr. Bafsa. It's a, an honour and a pleasure to, to be invited for this. We're going to be speaking about water. Water has got some very special and unique properties about it, quite unique as well. And to understand and appreciate this, we need to have a little look at its uh, structure and bonding. First of all, we, let's go back to, you know, how is the water molecule bonded together? How are those three atoms bonded together? Let's look at oxygen, for example. Oxygen is in group six in the periodic table. It's got six electrons in the outer shell. And now it bonds to those unpaired electrons. They bond with a hydrogen each. And th this is the bonding in water. Now, you need to be able to draw the dot and cross diagram for water to appreciate why is water a non-linear molecule. And it's because these pairs of electrons around the oxygen repel each other as far apart as possible that gives rise to a non-linear shape. So the, the non-linear shape is like so. Like so. Now, first of all, let's look at the properties of water. You see, we appreciate that it's a... It's a non-linear molecule and you've got these lone pairs of electrons on either side. You see, if you compare, let's say for example, if you compare carbon dioxide, when you think of carbon dioxide, it's a gas at room temperature. And if you compare that to water, water is a liquid at room temperature and it has a relatively, you know, higher than expected boiling point. Why is that? There's a force of attraction that's making it stick together, what is that force of attraction? That force of attraction, ladies and gentlemen, is hydrogen bonding, which we're going to have a look at. Oxygen, because of its size and because of its difference compared to hydrogen, we say uh, oxygen is more electron negative. Now, you see th this sharing of electrons between the oxygen and hydrogen. This is a covalent bond, a shared pair of electrons. Now, because of its size, because of its difference in this term called electron negativity, oxygen has a partial negative charge and hydrogen has a partial positive charge. And we can represent that. You've got these two electrons there. Both of them are being shared by hydrogen and oxygen. But the oxygen is more electron negative. Electron negativity is the ability of an atom to attract a pair of electrons in a covalent bond towards itself, giving rise to this being partially negative and this being partially positive. And it's this property that allows water molecules to effectively stick together. That's the intermolecular force between the molecules that allows it to stick together. And we'd see with other, with other water molecules, And the hydrogen bonding is between the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom. Can you see the opposite partial charges? There's an attraction between those opposite partial charges. And you can represent it like a line. It should be interacting with the lone pair. And um, you know, this, is what, this is what gives water its unique polar properties. When we think of polar, we can think of in terms of north pole, south pole, opposite poles, opposite partial charges. Now, what, why is ice less dense than water? Why does water have a higher than expected boiling point? You know, what force of attraction, you know, is, is the most important for life itself? 
The answer to all of these questions is hydrogen bonding and is represented by this. Um, to close, life itself wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this hydrogen bonding. You see, hydrogen bonding is not only between hydrogen and oxygen, but it's also between, between uh, it's with oxygen, as also nitrogen and also fluorine, but you don't see many examples <coughs> with fluorine, but the oxygen and nitrogen with hydrogen, if you look, if you st uh, study the structure of the DNA and the double helix, you find that the double helix is held together with hydrogen bonding. Therefore, being one of the most important or the most important intermolecular force between molecules that makes life possible. Thank you.